Hello everyone, I'm Koyun and today we are going to learn how to actually understand 15.3 menstrual cycle. So I understand even us women that learn this would get traumatized by it other than the Ubonium topic. So me back then as a student also do struggle with this chapter. So don't worry, I will actually lead you on how to actually understand this menstrual cycle. Yes, it's a never-ending cycle until you finally reach menopause, like, basically. Um, what is menstrual cycle for? A lot of people would think of menstruation period, but it's actually mainly to, you know, it's a whole cycle, like, basically. It's for the release of secondary oocyte, for fertilization, and then a lot of the hormones stimulating it to thicken the endometrium to prepare for a good area, I mean, an ideal condition for the embryo to implant on it. So there are actually a lot of role of menstrual cycle other than just shedding of endometrium layer that are not that depressing. So what you must actually know before learning the whole menstrual cycle is that you must know what are the function between these four main characters right here. So I understand a lot of students see these four hormones that bangs on already. <laughs> okay, so first of all, we have these two friends, which normally we can write it in short form, but if you still can remember the longer name, it's preferable to write it in a long name. Lah. Follicle stimulating hormone, passage, and luteinizing hormone. So these two hormones are actually uh, produced by this pituitary gland. And this one, FSH and LH, we actually learned it in the endocrine system lah, where we got relate to the uh, TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, growth hormone, all those stuff. Yeah, those are actually produced by pituitary gland. And the, another one is where the female uh, reproductive organ, which is ovary, Ovary not only secrete estrogen and progesterone, female sex hormone, it also involves in the production of gamete, which is ugonium process, where I just posted my video previously. So, these four hormones are actually really important. So, first of all, I would explain what are the roles of them before we enter the menstrual cycle. So, follicle stimulating hormone right here. What does it do? So you can take a look at their name, follicle stimulating. So it's really obvious that it is the one that stimulates the follicle to grow. So stimulates follicle growth. That's how easy it is. And what are the second row? What is the second row? It actually stimulates the developing follicles to release estrogen, like primary follicle, secondary follicle. It will actually have to mature to become a matured reference follicle, right? So this follicle stimulating hormone is actually stimulating this developing follicle to continue to release estrogen. So these two are the roles. Most importantly, stimulating the follicle growth. So stimulate developing follicles to release estrogen. What does this estrogen do? So let's take a look at what happens in the estrogen. Why they need to stimulate developing follicles to release estrogen? Because at the starting of the menstrual cycle is where your as I mean your your endometrium shed already. So you need to repair back the endometrium. That's the reason why estrogen come right after this uh FSH, which whereby developing follicles release estrogen. So estrogen is the one that stimulates follicle growth to it matured until it matured. Okay, and yeah, it's quite similar to FSH, but this one it stimulates follicle growth till it matured. And the one of the most important function of this estrogen it is to repair and thicken the endometrium since the endometrium layer has shed already, so it has to repair and thicken it. And other than that, it also stimulates the release of FSH and LH. So Right now, let's say the follicle is already matured into the graphene follicle and this estrogen stimulate the FSH and LH to release. So it's time for the with the high 
levels of LH is time for the stimulation of the secondary oxide to be released from the graphene follicle. That's why from this LH, we are going to relate it to this luteinizing hormone role because luteinizing hormone stimulates the ovulation process to occur, which is the release of secondary oxide. It's the same thing, okay? So other than stimulating ovulation, it will stimulate this uh, remaining, because now it, the graphene follicle say bye-bye to the secondary oxide. The secondary oxide leave the graphene follicle. So it's left with a follicular cell without secondary oxide. So what does this do? You throw it away? No, you. it still has its own function. It will form to corpus luteum. In order to form, it needs this luteinizing hormone to be formed. I mean, sim simulated to form a corpus luteum. Other than that, luteinizing hormone, it actually stimulate, stimulates corpus luteum to do its role to continue release estrogen and progesterone. So can you see this orange color? Yeah, a drawing I drew. Yeah, that's the corpus luteum. So the remaining fo follicular cell called corpus luteum. So it's stimulated by LH to continue release estrogen and progesterone. So what does this progesterone do? Okay, estrogen and progesterone, they are like best friends. Both of them actually stimulate the thickening of endometrium. For estrogen, it repairs and thickens because estrogen, it releases more at the starting of it. So it is the one that helps to repair it. What about progesterone other than thickening with endometrium? It advances it by enriching it with blood vessels to become more thicker, more enriched with blood vessels. Why do you need blood vessels? It's actually to prepare for embryo implantation. So once the embryo actually implants to it, right? Um, you know, you need for your fetal growth, right? So the endometrium must to be enriched with the blood vessel to, you know, provide oxygen, blood, oxygenated blood, right? So that's the reason why the endometrium has to be enriched with the blood vessels. And last but not least, Progesterone also have this role on inhibiting the release of FSH and LH. Why it wants to inhibit the release of FSH and LH? Okay, I thought all the hormones are good. Well, the reason why it inhibits the release of FSH and LH in case fertilization occur. So, if fertilization occur, can you imagine, right? The basically the diploid zygote it will travel it will transform into embryo and then it will implant on the endometrium, right? Do you still want uh, more secondary oocyte to be released? Do you still want more follicle to be grow and release of secondary oocyte? And then, yeah, more sperm fertilized to it and another new embryo also implant at the same time? No, right? So the reason why progesterone actually inhibit FSH and LH is actually to prevent follicle growth and prevent luteinizing hormones from stimulating ovulation. So that the pregnant woman won't get, you know, suddenly pregnant with another, <laughs> yeah, won't get pregnant at so many times at the same time. So yeah, let's basically sum it all on the FSH, LH, estrogen, and progesterone. So normally, I would like to explain FSH at the first level. And then FSH, because of FSH, it still is developing follicle to release estrogen. That's the reason why the estrogen level starts to rise up. So I will um, explain estrogen. So after explaining estrogen, since estrogen is the one that stimulates the release of LH, so the LH level will peak already because of this estrogen stimulation. So LH will peak. Then what happened? Ovulation, formation of corpus luteum. It stimulates corpus luteum to release estrogen and progesterone. So, since it stimulates corpus luteum to release progesterone, what is the role of progesterone? It is to thicken endometrium and enrich it with blood vessels. And at the same time, inhibit release of FSH and LH to prevent follicle growth, prevent ovulation, so that, you know, there won't be like two secondary oocytes will be all <laughs> released at the same time, then get fertilized. That will be gone case. Lah. 
So now let's take a look at this diagram right here. I understand a lot of students don't really know how to relate it with the function of it. So like what I mentioned just now, normally I would actually mention about the FSH. So that I would mention to the estrogen. Emphasize on the estrogen level and then only explain about the LH. Then last but not least, only explain about the progesterone. All right, so normally day one to day five is where the, I mean, all the hormonal levels are really low, except for FSH is slightly higher. Now. So you can see this FSH. Yeah. All right. So for this FSH, it is the one that stimulates the growth of follicle. So at the, okay, from day one to day five, yeah, FSH is released. And then you can see right here, okay, um, I use green pen to draw out, I mean, to write out the function. So FSH, okay, so FSH is to stimulate something. What does it stimulate? It stimulates follicle growth. Other than that, what does it stimulate? It stimulates developing follicle to release estrogen. So estrogen, I'll be using uh, blue in color to release this so let's say this one is the FSH. Okay, it stimulates the developing follicle to release out the FSH. FSH blah, release out the estrogen hormone. Okay, so develop stimulates developing follicle to release estrogen. So yeah, the developing follicle release out the estrogen. So now let's relate to the function of the estrogen. So after that, can you see that because of this estrogen, the endometrium starts to repair, right? Initially, it sheds off. Now, it starts to repair, right? So what is the function of estrogen? Estrogen is actually to stimulate the repair and thicken of endometrium. Endometrium and endometrial wall is the same thing. Lah. Yeah. And other than repair and thicken the endometrium, it also will stimulate the release of FSH and LH. Okay. Other than that, it also stimulates the follicle growth till matured until it matured la, basically so can you see like oh it starts to estrogen it stimulates the follicle to keep growing until it become matured compared to fsh it stimulates follicle growth but estrogen it stimulates follicle growth till it matured you emphasize till it matured due to the reason that can you see this part? Estrogen starts to spike up. And what does the estrogen stimulate? It stimulates the release of FSH and LH, right? Or and LH. So when the estrogen level spikes up, I mean increase, it will stimulate the release of LH. So can you see the LH level now? It becomes a spike, the highest peak right here. So now let's relate to the LH hormone. What does it do? Because now, due to the estrogen release, it actually stimulates follicle growth to it matured. So once graphene follicle is matured, it's time to say bye-bye to secondary oocyte. This is actually the secondary oocyte. So who's the one that stimulates the release of secondary oocyte, which is ovulation process? It is the 
LH hormone. So normally it's at the day 14. Lah. I mean, sometimes the graph diagram varies by a few days, one or two days. Okay, so basically LH is the one that stimulates ovulation to happen. Other than stimulating ovulation to occur, it also stimulates the formation of corpus luteum. So you see, this remaining follicular cells, it gets stimulated to form a corpus luteum by this LH hormone. And it LH also stimulates corpus, I just write CP, uh, corpus luteum to release estrogen and progesterone. That's the reason why after the spike of this LH, LH is the one that stimulates the corpus luteum to release estrogen and progesterone, right? So let's take a look at the estrogen and progesterone level, the blue and purple one. It spikes up a bit, right? It increases, right? It increases by a lot compared to LH and FSH. Okay, so you can see due to the fact, you know, progesterone and estrogen, what are the similarities between that? Both of them also taken the endometrium. So you can see the endometrium is getting so thick, right? So yeah, now we that's the reason why I am going to relate it to the last but not least, the progesterone function. So what does the progesterone do? Progesterone actually taken endometrium and enrich it with blood vessel. So that's the main function of the progesterone hormone. Other than that, it actually also inhibits release of FSH and LH. Why it wants to release, inhibit release of FSH and LH? It's because it doesn't want the follicle growth and ovulation to occur. Lah. Okay? So since the if the fertilization process occurs, they just want one embryo to implant to it, right? They don't want another new secondary oocyte to come out again, okay? So, yeah, that's basically how this whole thing works, okay? So, in all, sometimes there are questions that we like blur it out and ask you which is the hormone of it. Well, how do you actually see them? Okay. First of all, you look at which graphite has the highest peak at the middle part. I know sometimes they will treat students between estrogen and LH, lah, but the peak of LH is damn obvious. It's super high. High until gonna reach the, yeah, basically it's very high. So LH is normally has the highest peak. A very spiking peak. Compared to this, it's like quite wide, lah, but this is so, so spiky. Okay. Okay, so this is how you see LH and normally LH the level it only spike once. Yeah. It only spike once uh, the, the most obvious spike in the middle. Normally during day 14 like that. Uh. But this graph is before day 14, around day 13 like that. And then the another thing you can actually identify is progesterone and estrogen. So progesterone, remember, just now. I mean progesterone, okay. estrogen, right? Wait, yeah, I explain progesterone first. So progesterone, just now, did I actually touch about progesterone? No, I didn't mention about progesterone. I keep saying about, oh, estrogen, blah, 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 estrogen. Okay, but at the end, I got talked about, oh, progesterone finally come up, right? So for this graph, when you see the, the last part that suddenly peaked the most, right, has the widest peak right there, and the highest peak, not highest, lah, but yeah, widest peak at here. This one is actually the progesterone. The progesterone level sure above the estrogen level at the last part. I'm trying to let you know after the ovulation part. So after ovulation, you try to compare. Lah. This one initially always quite low. Then after day 14, it continued to rise up and continue to the last day. Lah. 
and it's above the another highest one, which is, I mean, the second high one is the estrogen. So yeah, that's how you see progesterone. What about estrogen? Estrogen is, it will have like, because just now I got mentioned about estrogen, developing follicle to release estrogen. And then later on, the corpus luteum will also release estrogen. So yeah, they will have like two kind of high level. Lah. Yeah. And last but not least is the FSH hormone. So that basically sums it all about this. All right. So endometrium, when you want to explain, is basically because of OMP estrogen and progesterone. Due to both of them, that's why the endometrium starts to thicken. Estrogen is mainly focusing on B-flat and thickened. Progesterone is thickened and enriched with blood vessels. So yeah, basically this is the most important info you have to know and the day you can at least know like which day. Na. So when they want you to like discuss relationship between level of hormones with the changes that occur in ovary, an endometrial layer during menstrual cycle you can actually mention in which day and then um the most actually majority of them is from what you understand in the flow manner of the role of the hormone so you can actually refer to this one. first of all you explain about fsh like what i always mentioned first of all you mentioned about fsh then because of this fsh which keep stimulates developing follicle to release estrogen so it's time for you to switch it up to the estrogen role after the estrogen role where it stimulates the release of lh and fsh you can yeah continue with the lh role and after that i will continue it last but not least with the progesterone role that's how you actually relate with each other lah. and you also have to mention about what happens with endometrial layer what happens to follicle? So, yeah, actually, I know that there are gonadotrophin releasing hormone, the negative feedback mechanism. I understand that part is really complicated when you want to understand the whole thing. It's really hard to remember. So, at least you remember what I taught you for this part. It's actually more than enough for you to answer the questions, lah. So, but you also have to read the questions well, like in case you didn't get to answer it correctly. So, yeah. Um, in the initial stage, day 1 to day 5, is where pituitary gland secretes the FSH. Then it stimulates the follicle growth, you want the right formation of the can, and stimulates developing follicle to secrete estrogen. So after talking about this, you can mention it up for the estrogen role. So 15 to 13, concentration continues to increase. What does the estrogen do? It repairs and heal the endometrium lining. And it also thicker and filled with blood vessel. And it also stimulates release of FSH and LH. Okay. So it also stimulates the release of FSH and LH. This one maybe you think is quite complicated, like why suddenly we feel with blood vessel. Yeah, if you feel with blood vessel, but progesterone main role is to enrich it. Lah. But this one they write it, mentioned it earlier, maybe yeah, maybe you want to write thicker and then this estrogen and then rich. Okay. Alright, so moving on, we are going to talk about the LH hormone. So LH hormone is the highest on the day 13. Okay, LH level peaks the highest level. So it stimulates what? Ovulation. Ovulation is it is the same thing like release of secondary oocyte. It's fallopian tube. Depends which one you want to write. And stimulates formation of corpus luteum. Corpus stimulates corpus luteum to secrete estrogen and progesterone. Now let's move on to the progesterone role. So progesterone role right here is basically um thicken the endometrium or maintains it and enrich it with blood vessel for the implantation to occur and then progesterone will inhibit the release of FSH and LH. Why? Because it doesn't want to prevent the formulation and follicle growth. Lah. 
All right, so because you can see this level right here, la, in the end, it decreases. Okay, so you know that, yeah, period occurs. Why? Because there is no fertilization occurs. So if this person happens to be pregnant, means uh, fertilize, fertilization occurs successfully, the endometrial layer will actually continue to rise up. Yeah. Uh, rise up or you can say maintain la. okay but for people that having maybe if they want you to predict what happened to miscarriage person you their endometrium unfortunately because of their hormonal imbalance uh, maybe that time estrogen progesterone very low level unable to maintain the thickness of endometrium the miscarriage person endometrium if they want you to draw and not become very low because it's you know, miscarriage, ma. the endometrium thickness is not maintained. And what about us? What about girl that fertilization do not occur successfully? Okay, no sperm. Okay, I mean, no sperm managed to penetrate it. Okay. Uh, yeah, the endometrium will shed, start to shed. So the corpus luteum will eventually disintegrate but for pregnant women of course like it will still continue to maintain it so yeah basically endometrial lining begins to break down and maturation starts all over again so yeah basically sums it all about this menstrual cycle so i hope you understand this video and yeah i will see you in the next video bye bye